What's up everyone? Good morning and welcome to OV Church Online. We are so glad that you're able to join us for church today. The awesome thing about doing church this way is that it's such a great opportunity to invite your friends and family who might not walk into the walls of this church building, but they'll join you for church online. So I want you to copy this link right now and I want you to share it with everyone you know. So do that. All right, so we're gonna get into worship now. So everyone stand up, turn up your speakers, and let's do it. that you shed your blood so I'm gonna live like my shame is gone I won't be shackled to the way I was no I'm gonna live like my chains are gone they're gone now my sin is dead and gone and I sing hallelujah oh it's done Cause your time is up Oh, I'm gonna praise like the stone is gone Hallelujah. 
worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, Jesus you are here, moving in our I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are the way you make miracle work, promise keep Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are the way you make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working oh i believe yes even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't 
feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, oh, I believe you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, yes, you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, yes, you are. The way maker, miracle worker. Oh, Father, we worship you. We come together today in the presence of our King. Lord, we've come to honor you. We've come today to give you our best, our first fruits. We've come today, Father, knowing that it is you who is our way maker. No one else can make a way but you. No one else can give a thirsty land the water that it needs. No one else is true but you. You hold all of the answers. You hold the world in your hands. And so, Lord, today, we come to honor you for your place, your position as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And in humble submission, we say to you, you're worthy of all honor and all praise. We bless you. We honor you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So be it. Well, welcome to OV Church. We are so glad that you've joined us today online, and we're just really um, so, so glad that you're here, and we just know the great word is ahead, and so we're looking forward to all that God has to say to us today. So we'd love to get better acquainted with you. If you want to just send us a message, and um, we're just glad that you're with us today. We know that God has so much in store for us. And I was reminded of the scripture that in all things we're to give thanks. And so no matter what circumstance you may find yourself in or what circumstance you're going through, God is faithful. And he is our way maker. And so because of that, we can have a grateful heart. And having a grateful heart gives us the opportunity then to worship him with our lives and with our giving and, and to be generous in all that we do and give of ourselves. And I like the scripture in Philippians. It says, speaks of giving. It says, so that the fruit of your generosity may bring an abundant reward. And so when our heart is grateful towards God and all that he's doing and trusting and knowing that he's going to provide and take care of us, and then we can be generous. And it says that there's an abundant reward for that. And then in verse 19, it says, I am convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have. For I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through the anointed one, Jesus Christ. So God is the way maker, and he is all about meeting your need physically, spiritually, emotionally. He is there for you and for me, and it's because of that we can give generously back. And so we're continuing in our worship at this time with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And even though there's a distance between us, you can give online at oakvalleychurch.org. You can text to give. You can give through our app, 
OV Church app, and you can even mail a check-in um, to P.O. Box 1130, Cala Mesa, 92320. And we thank you for your generosity. God is faithful, and he's up to some good things in your life and in this church as we reach our local community with the goodness of God. So let's pray over our offering, tithe and offerings. Father, we thank you. Thank you that you are faithful. You are way maker. We thank you, Father, for your great love and your generosity towards us. And we thank you that we can trust you no matter what, knowing that you are there for us to meet every need. And so, Lord, it's out of a grateful heart and a generous heart that we give back to you. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, your amazing grace and love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hey, give somebody a high five in your house. Give somebody a squeeze around the neck. Let them know you love them. We love you too. So glad that you've joined us today. It's a privilege and honor for you to allow us to come into your home, uh, to share the word of God, to experience the presence of God together. I absolutely believe that these are historic times. These are powerful times. These are times that God knew would happen, and in it and through it all, he's going to be lifted up. He is going to make sure that his kingdom comes out of this stronger than ever before. All right, I want to share with you uh, number two of freedom, our number two message where freedom is concerned. Now, last week, we began a series called Freedom and and we started looking at, at uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, where the Bible says this, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. Listen, when you're condemned, when you have the writ of condemnation over you, you are not free. You are bound up. You are in bondage. So the Lord, knowing that, did something for you and I that would allow us freedom from our bondage. There's no condemnation. There's no prison cell. There is no bondage if you are willing to be in Christ Jesus. Now, we saw last week this word in means two things according to Strong's uh, word study. First of all, it means position. Position. When who God sees you to be is different often than who we see ourselves to be. And so what God desires of us is that we get in position to see ourselves the way that he sees us. Your life should be based on the finished work of Jesus Christ, not the unfinished work of you. Oh, I'm so glad I am so glad that I don't have to rely upon me and what I've done to take my position in the family of God, in the body of Christ. The second word we saw last week that describes what it means to be in Christ Jesus is this word instrumentality. And we saw that it means simply service. You becoming an instrument of God to work, to serve for his kingdom. You're not truly free until you're serving God, serving his kingdom in some way. Now, Americans know what freedom is. They know what freedom isn't. As we speak across this land, America, Americans are protesting their liberties and their freedoms being limited. Listen, we're all willing to help for health's sake but not at the expense of our freedom. Freedom is important to every American. It's important to every believer. John chapter 8, we saw this last week as well, beginning at verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, remember the Jews were coming to know uh, Jesus as Savior, as Messiah. They were new in the faith. And he said to them, if you abide in my word... You will be my disciples indeed. Then in verse 32, we read, and you shall know the truth. We know that Jesus called himself. The, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
and the truth will make you free. Then we go all the way to verse 36, which says, Therefore, as a result of believing in me as your Messiah, as a result of receiving the word of the Lord, therefore, if the Son makes you free, remember, uh, John chapter 1, verse 14 says, Jesus is the word made flesh. If the Son makes you free, if the word makes you free, you shall be free. And then this explanation point, indeed. Not just free, but free indeed. Listen, as an American, I don't want to be kind of free. I want to be free indeed. I want my freedom to be all-encompassing. Uh, I, I, as a believer, don't want just to be free. I want to be free indeed. But today we're going to see there's a high cost for freedom. Freedom isn't free. It costs. There's a price to pay for freedom. Freedom can be a messy business. This nation was founded upon the belief that we should be free from the tyranny of men and government. Freedom cost many lives. It cost many innocent lives. Every subsequent battle we have fought as a nation to preserve the freedom uh, continues to cost us. It cost us lives. It cost us innocent lives. I mean, this nation was founded upon people giving their lives up, innocent people. Actually, if you want to look at it this way, um, we celebrate the 4th of July, and in doing so, we celebrate our freedom. But did you know our freedom <coughs> cost innocent people their lives? For us to secure freedom in this nation, we came in and, and uh, the, the Native American that was here, uh, it cost them. It really did. It cost them innocent blood. Now, I'm not trying to rewrite history here. I'm just telling you what happened. Innocent blood is shed when freedom is taken. And it's no different when it comes to the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 23 Verses 13 through 15 says this, Then Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, said to them, You have brought this man to me as one who misleads the people. And indeed, I've examined him thoroughly in your presence, and I have found no fault in this man. He's innocent. There's nothing that you can accuse him of. He's not guilty. Then verse 15 says, neither did Herod. I sent you back to him. And indeed, nothing deserving of death has been done by this man, Jesus. Freedom, the cost of it, is innocent blood. It, it was so for our nation as it was birthed. It is so for the kingdom of God, what Jesus did for us. On the cross. Now, today we're going to take a look at the life of Paul, the Apostle Paul. And he was a man who understood freedom and valued it. He wrote the book of Galatians, which many have called the believer's declaration of independence. The Apostle Paul valued freedom. And the reason that he valued it so highly was because it cost him everything. I mean, he lived most of his life in bondage. And when he got set free from that bondage, he never wanted to go back there again. He, he relished the freedom that had been granted him in his life. And when you look at, at Paul's life, uh, after he believed in Jesus, after he received his freedom, many times he was stoned to death and had nothing to do with drugs. Many times the Apostle Paul was left for dead. And yet, here's something that he always did. He would get back up and he would preach the gospel. He would, he would do the assignment that was given him on that road to Damascus. And, and after that, 
road of being struck down in the path, in the roadway. He was taken to the prophet Ananias who, who declared over him, this is what your assignment is. You're called to preach this gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And every time he got beat down, every time he went through stuff, every time he was stoned and left for dead, he got back up and he did the assignment. Why? Because he valued his freedom. And he was not going back to be in bondage again. I want to show you just a bit of his life. And maybe in doing so, we can take a look at ours and make some determinations about how we'll live in this freedom Christ gave us on the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection. Acts chapter 27. Here's one account of what took place in Paul's life, beginning at verse 1. And when it was decided that we should sail to Italy, they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to one who was named Julius, a centurion of the Augustan Regiment. The Bible then in verse 4 says, they got put out to sea from there, and we, the Apostle Paul is speaking, sailed under the shelter of Cyprus because the winds were contrary. In other words, they hugged the coastline because a storm was brewing. The winds were contrary to peace and peaceful sailing, verse 7. And when we had sailed slowly, Many days. How many of you know when you're going someone, somewhere, you, you just don't want to, you want to be in a hurry. I mean, you want to get there, especially on a boat in the middle of a, a bit of a storm. And yet they sailed slowly many days, and they arrived with difficulty. There was great difficulty in this journey, and the winds, winds didn't permit them to proceed. And so once again, they hugged the coastline, and they sailed under the shelter of Crete off of Samoan. Then from there, we go to verse 9, and we find out when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul then advised them, and in verse 10, he declares this, men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss. Oh, really, Paul? Uh, where, where did you get your clue? Uh, from being tossed around for days on end, uh, from the, the sea that was, that was throwing you all over the deck. Paul says, this voyage is about to end in disaster, you think? Verse 14, but not long after, a tempestuous headwind arose called, called Euroclidon. So when the ship was caught in it and could not head into the wind... We just gave up and let her drive. Boat, you just do what you're going to do because we can't control you. And that's exactly what they did, verse 18. And because we were exceedingly tempest-tossed. See, it get, goes from bad to worse. The next day, we start throwing stuff overboard just to lighten up the ship. Verse 20 says... And when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. They lost all their hope. Verse 21 says, they were not only hopeless, but they were hungry. They had not eaten. And, and uh, from there we go to verse 27, which tells us that when the 14th night had come, can you imagine 14 days in this mess? Can you imagine hugging the, the sides of the ship with dry heaves you haven't eaten, but uh, you're, you're just, I mean, you are as sick as can be. Your life is in danger. You, you're sp in your spirit, you're hopeless. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than this. Then we read in verse 33, and as the day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, this is the 14th day that we've, we've continued without food, and we haven't eaten nothing. And they're all over the sides, uh, dry heaving. And so in verse 44, finally the ship comes aground, and it wasn't pretty. By striking a place, there were two seas that met, and they ran the ship aground, and the 
uh, brow struck so fast and remained immovable, but the stern was broken up by the violence of the waves. And verse 44 says, and the rest, some on board, some on parts of the ship, they all made their way to the land. I was going to say dry land, but they were soaking wet and it was still raining. And so they got to the ground on planks and prayer. And from there, we continue the story in Acts chapter 28, verse 3, the Bible tells us that Paul gathered wood up, bundles of sticks, and, and made a big fire because they were shivering. They were so cold, and they needed to dry out. It really was a health issue, and they're throwing wood on the fire, and Paul, thinking he was grabbing a piece of wood to toss on the fire, actually grabbed a viper, a snake, who came to the fire to be warmed, and it fastened on his hand. It bit him. And it should have been deadly. I mean, come on. No matter how bad your circumstances are in life, no matter how difficult the last few months have been, it can't be any worse than what Paul just described over the last few weeks for him. And do you know what Paul's response was? He didn't whine about the fact that he was soaking wet, the ship was lost. He didn't whine about the fact that he had gotten bit by a viper. He didn't whine about the fact that they're stranded on an island. You know what he did? He got up and he went right back to serving. He got up and he went right back into position. He got up and he went back to doing his assignments. Why? Because he was a free man. He was free. We're going to find out how free you are spiritually, depending on how long this thing persists that we're all in. Paul was free, and no bad circumstance was going to change that fact. He, he started out in bondage. He really did. Galatians chapter 1, verse 13 tells us, listen, you've heard of my former conduct in Judaism. Uh, he, he was a scholar, Paul was. He, he studied. He, he fa fancied himself, we'll read it later, as being much more smarter than any Jew that he, he ever met. He persecuted the church of God beyond measure. He actually tried to destroy the church. Verse 14 tells us, that he advanced in Judaism beyond many of his contemporaries in, in his nation, and he was more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of his fathers. He, he had hatred. He had religious bondage. He was in bondage to tradition, which really is people bondage. And yet, Paul says, Romans chapter 6, verse 4, I am free in Christ. That is the old man. That is who I used to be. That is what my life was like when I was in a prison cell. That is what my life was like when I was in bondage. But that's not me anymore. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also, me also, shall walk in newness of life. I'm not going to live that way anymore. Listen, let me tell you something. Everyone who's listening, whatever platform you are listening to me on, let me say this to you right now. You cannot come back to church you cannot gather again. Where, whatever church you attend, wherever you're going to gather, and listen, we're going to gather very soon. Keep your ears open. I'm going to announce soon. We're going to gather very soon, sooner than you think. Having said that, wherever and whenever we gather, you cannot walk into these church doors the same way you left them months ago. You've got to experience in your life a freedom like you've never experienced before. 
I'm, I'm experiencing a freedom and, and worship is, is experiencing a freedom and our, our tech crews are experiencing a freedom and, and together the body of Christ, the family of God, we've got to walk in the newness of life that is powered by the freedom we found in Christ Jesus and it's not hinging on what we're experiencing externally all that counts is what we're experiencing on the inside of us. Paul found his freedom in Christ. Verse 5 says, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we'll also be in the likeness of his resurrection. <clears throat> Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Sin. Oh, find your freedom. Find your freedom. Find it inside of you. That's where Jesus resides. What does freedom in Christ compel you to do? I'll tell you what it compels you to do to get back in position. Say, I'm not going to live this life in the same way that I lived it before. I'm going to live it not based on what I can do or what I don't do but based on what he did on the cross, based on what he secured for me when he came out of that tomb. I'm going to get back in position. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 6 says, Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, listen to this, Paul says. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel. Of the, I was of the tribe of Benjamin. I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, the best of the best. Concerning the law, I was a Pharisee, smarter than all those other preachers, smarter than all those other religious teachers. Concerning zeal, I persecuted the church personally. Concerning the righteousness which is in the law, huh, perfect, blameless. But you know what Paul is saying? I'm throwing all that stuff aside because I found my new position in Christ. You want freedom? You better throw away how good you can be and how well you can do things and find your freedom in who Jesus is in who he has made you to, to be. What does freedom in Christ compel you to do? Instrumentality it compels you to serve. I mean, to tell you, when we open these church doors soon for you to come, you ought to come running in saying, use me, use me, use me, God. Use me. I'm all in because I am free. Keep preaching. Keep serving. Keep fulfilling the assignments that God has given you. Keep shrugging off disappointments. Keep running to the battle. Keep fighting for your freedom. Keep overcoming the flesh. Keep saying no to your addictions. Once Paul tasted freedom, in Christ, he was willing to go through anything, anything that happened in his life to keep his freedom. Devil, I'm coming through. Devil, I am coming through. I've been singing this song. Uh, if you want to look it up, go ahead. It's by a group called We the Kingdom. And it's called Don't Tread on Me. I, I'm, I'm doing a, a message. I'm working on a message. First, first Sunday, we come back, I'm going to preach it. Don't tread on me. And it really just looks the devil square in the face and says, listen, man, you took your best shot and it didn't work. As a matter of fact, what you meant to destroy the body of Christ only grew it. What you meant to pull down the kingdom of God, God has raised up a free church a free people who run to serve, run to the battle, get in position in his authority and in his life and in his light. I'm coming through. Are you? Oh, let's be people who are different than we were two or three months ago. 2 Corinthians 11. Here's what Paul said about his life. Are they servants of Christ? 
And then he says this. He says, I, I may be out of my mind to tell you what I'm about to tell you. I must be crazy to say what I'm about to say. But then he says this. I've worked much harder. I've been in prison more frequently. I've been flogged more severely, whipped, chained. I've been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea with no boat, just treading water, dog paddling. I've been constantly on the move. I had no place to call my own, to put my head down on my own pillow. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, in danger from false believers. I have labored, I have toiled, I have often gone without sleep. I've known what it is to be hungry, thirsty. I've often gone without food. I've been cold, I've been naked. And besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Listen to me. God is more interested in freeing you in your spirit than freeing you from your circumstances and situations. Because he knows if he can get you free internally, you'll be free from all the stuff that's happening externally. Paul said, I may not be out of my trouble yet, externally, but I am free. I am free. I may be in a cell, but I am not bound. I may be in prison, but I am not in bondage. Free from pain? No, I still hurt. Free from uncertainty? I don't know what they're going to do to me. Free from have you ever asked God to set you free from certain people? Listen, stop praying, God, set me free from it. Stop praying, God, set me free from that. Because it and that may get better. But if you're not free, it doesn't matter. We need to be free on the inside so that when it and that happens... It doesn't affect a free man. Stop praying, God, set me free from it and that and say, God, set me free from me. Pray this way, God, set me free from me so that I can be free to live in you, in Christ. That's where liberty is. I will not be imprisoned by resentment. I will not be imprisoned anymore by bondage. I will not be imprisoned by bitterness. I will not be imprisoned by unforgiveness. I will not be imprisoned by what you think of me. Why should your life be dictated by somebody who didn't die for you? There is someone who has. His name is Jesus. He is the son of the living God. He is the word of God made flesh. And who the son sets free, you shall be free indeed. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the wonderful opportunity we've had today to place our lives, open our hearts, our minds being receptive to take in the engrafted Word of God. Thank you, Lord, that today your presence and your power that's resident in, in the praises of God's people, the worship of God's people, and the entrance of the Word of God that gives us light. Thank you 
that that word sets us free. That you, the Son, sets us free. And we're not just kind of free. We are free indeed. We are free to worship the way we want to worship. We are free to receive the word and live it and do it. We'll not be perfect. We never will be. But we will be free. Freedom is ours. And so, Lord, I pray that everyone listening to this message will consider their own lives, their position. Are they counting on themselves or are they trusting in you? And if they're trusting in you, then they're truly free. And so when they hear the bad reports and when they turn on the news and and they hear news that discourages and pushes down, Because they're free, they rise above it. And they say, no, I have been set free. We'll judge ourselves. And we'll say, have I truly been set free? Am I serving the kingdom? Am I being a good steward of how God and who God created me to be? Am I serving the King of kings and the Lord of lords? We're bond servants. We were created to serve. Lord, I pray that you'll stir our hearts in Jesus' name. Now listen, I want to pray with those of you who are watching. And you find yourself without a relationship with God. You see, sin separates man from God. Always has, always will. And so in order for us to be in right relationship with God, we've got to somehow get that sin nature taken care of and that's why God when he created you so in love with you with such purpose that he placed in you when he looked at you after man sinned in the garden and that sin came on us all after that God longed to be in right relationship with his creation and so he sent his one and only son Jesus to die on the cross for you Oh, will you today, will you today let God love you, let God forgive you, let God be the Lord of your life? If you're watching and you've never made Jesus Lord or you're away from God, you're not serving him like you could, like you can, like you should, say yes to the Lord. Pray this prayer with me. Come on, join me. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me dying on the cross for me, forgiving me, offering to be the Lord of my life. Today, I confess with my mouth that I believe in my heart that you, Jesus, are the Son of God. You died on the cross and you rose again. And today you come to live in my life as Lord and Savior. From this day on, I will serve you all of my days. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, go to our website, oakvalleychurch.org. Let us know that you prayed that prayer. We want to reach out to you. If you're watching, Uh, through a social media platform. Comment. Tell us. We want to reach out to you. We have some things we want to get into your hand. We want to get you involved in a class to help you get started. Listen, we love you. We appreciate you. And we're so grateful that you've responded to God's love today. 
Listen, we want to tell all of you who are watching, church family, those of you who are watching from wherever, we're so grateful and thankful that you allowed us this privilege to be in your home. And we want you to know we miss you. Uh, we love you. Listen, because very soon we are going to tell you when we are coming back together. And it's sooner than you think. I'm excited. We are going to have an explosion of joy and celebration. Love you, miss you, appreciate you. We will see you next time. God bless.